responsibility, and I've said it in the past, the government has a responsibility to communicate with every media house on the island. And um, I, I put it bluntly that before, you know, the, the former administration had a bad habit of not holding press conferences and informing the public which put them in power or put them there to govern what of what is happening. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I, I see that has developed. I was corrected the last time when somebody said mm. that the Prime Minister held one press conference to which, <laughs> uh, you know, I did not attend. You know, so, I mean, they, need to, they need to account to the public and accounting to the public does not take place on the market step, sorry, mm -hmm. you know, after one year. That, that, that is not what I'm talking about. We have a call. Good evening, caller. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening. I am not a professional media person, so my terminology may not be totally accurate in mm -hmm. terms of expressing my opinion. So I hope what I say makes sense. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that right now the St. Lucia media is not competing with a local audience or local market, but an international market. Therefore, there is a need to improve in different ways on the quality of the service that it it's, um, gives to the local market because the local people don't have to listen to public radio or television if they don't want to anymore. And if they have to remain competitive, make money out of doing what they do, they have to give a better quality of, of um, what you call it, uh, entertainment, news, whatever you're doing, you have to improve the quality. I must say that I am very impressed with the Untold Stories segment at, I think it's Calabash, mm -hmm. that provides um, uh, Untold Stories. It is one of the most um, current, interesting um, programs that I have taken time to listen to locally. And I think there is room to continue to improve that uh, program. I do think, however, that there is also a need to have some level of, if you call it edi editing, some of the information that is submitted in these stories. I think the story should be edited to some extent. Uh, I don't think it is necessary to bring the story across and in some cases it may not be appropriate for some of the listeners. Whether you call it um, censoring or not, I think mm -hmm. we need to determine what we want our public to hear, especially our young people and what we are trying to communicate to them. If you have something on gays and lesbians, I think as a matter of fact my son is the one who turned me <coughs> to that story. And while I thought it was a very good story, I thought there was a lot of graphic information that came out of that that mm -hmm. was not really necessary in terms of communicating the story of, of gays in St. Lucia. So basically I'm, I'm saying that yes, you need to improve on the product. I think even in terms of you talked about the idea that um, what journalists get or the reporters get the, the, the salaries and so on are low. I also think there is an opportunity because of the amount of media houses that currently exist, there is a, a, a sort of open door for improvement in creative um, products that we can, children, um, entertainment for children. You, you have so many areas you could go to in terms mm -hmm. of entertainment okay. uh, or journalism. And I don't think enough mm -hmm. creativity comes out or emerges out of what is produced in the media right now. I will hang up to let somebody else come. Thank you very much for your contribution. V uh, much appreciated. Um, but it goes back to the question um, of <coughs> this finite pie. And if you have infinite numbers of media houses emerging, mm -hmm. then you know you have to be biting into that same pie. So the amount that you can bite off mm -hmm. becomes smaller and smaller yes. with every every yes. increment. Yes, because so yeah. yeah, exactly. Because you know, it is not growing the amount of money. But I think it even has to do with education of the people who, who run the who run marketing for the companies. Because for example, the Cinderella company would say, Okay, I have this hundred percent budget 
I'm going to give 25% uh, to DBS, 25% to HGS because they have these massive audiences. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give 15% um, to Joyce. I'm going to give 15% 15 to Calabash. And they want to try to make sure that they fund everybody because they want to catch even the one person who watches that other channel. Mm -hmm. In so doing, they, they themselves are encouraging that because you somebody else comes along, they're going to say, okay, let me take one percent out of HCS and mm -hmm. give it to that person because the one percent will allow that person to survive mm -hmm. and get that one person, that one other person, even though it's the person's mother mm -hmm. who's watching the, the, the station, they will get to see my ad. I will get to you know, be across that spectrum mm -hmm. um, instead of saying, you know what, let's focus on the market that's important to us. Again, are they even aware what the market is for mm -hmm. that particular exactly. television station? Exactly. What are they, what is their segment? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. who are they targeting? But, who do they reach? Know, How we well do they reach? I mean, what in what time slots do they reach? You them? know, but we don't even do these so studies. You exactly. know, I, I mean, we have we have yeah, the, we have the, the system problem. survey, mm -hmm. which I, I personally I don't have much um, confidence mm -hmm. in. You should. It places uh, DBS has still. Uh, I, I really don't. I really don't <laughs> because of how you know that survey is done. Mm -hmm. You know, in the U.S. you have the overnight surveys, for example, so they can tell you the next day how many people watch the Super Bowl. Yes. They could tell you how many people watch the Grammys. They yes, could tell yeah. you how many people. But that requires things like putting boxes on people's That's television right. sets, right. etc. Yeah, well, which well, well, again, well we have yes. we have boxes at least. Um, Lyman and. Mm -hmm. um, this well, you need to work with Lyman and start doing, start doing that research. No, wh well, I mean, what I'm saying is there, there, there are opportunities. However, mm -hmm. the resources mm -hmm. are still needed to get these things yeah, done. I think it, it has and to be a you know, the, the last scholar talked about children's programming. Yes. The resources are right. also needed. Right. Programming is very costly. And if you have to get a, a, a good program, the easiest program to do is a call-in program. Sorry about that. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. You have one person hosting or moderating, and you have a telephone line. That's it, mm -hmm. you know. And everybody no, just calls in. Everybody calls in. I'm talking about radio. Yeah. You know, not t not TV. In this yeah, sense. just radio. Right. You know, TV is a little bit more. You need more people than yes, that. Yes. You know, that's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But but to produce a good program, you know, you with the research, mm -hmm. that's right. you know, with the with the background, yes. you mm -hmm. know, with the with the context mm -hmm. present. Mm -hmm. And proper future. editing, yeah, and just, you and know, just proper to pick editing. Up on what the caller said about editing in terms mm -hmm. of the untold stories, and obviously she's talking about issues of okay, what should be aired, mm -hmm. the time, and so time on. Slots, I mean, I looked at, I, I saw the program she was referring to. Nothing there offended me mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. I'm in my thirties. Maybe yes, but she was watching it with uh, her son or a, a younger mm -hmm. member of the family. So she's right about those sorts of decisions. But you're right, resources. No, that's why, guys. I'm sorry policy mm -hmm. because if there's a communication policy that guides how many entrants can get into the media market then you have some control mm -hmm. over things like what Maria talked about mm -hmm. where a, a Cinderella company doesn't have to think about 10 different mm -hmm. companies they have to be contributing to because government has put some kind of control on who can get into the market and so in terms of sponsorship I, I would like to think um, another agency not government well, you know like an independent one like, like an F uh, like it, a, it, yeah. well, but you even see that that still mm -hmm. comes from government in a way, right, in a federal, right. in other words, right. yeah, yeah, there has to be yeah. a body. Mm -hmm. that I agree with him. Once you say government, people start getting antsy. Yes. It's like, oh my well, goodness, you know, we have political interference. In that well, did that just happen to me? Right, yeah. yes. And I think we need to stop that. We yeah. need to stop confusing government and politics. Mm -hmm. They're not the same right. thing. It's true. Okay, politics is a way of forming a government. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, so I, I think it goes back to policy. It really yeah. does. I mm -hmm. think. Okay, we, we lost that call. Right. Yeah. So then, so so that's why I think that. If the media association wants to have any kind of impact, for me personally, you guys, well, I'm going to be part of the association soon, fix them we on the policy. We need mm -hmm. to fix the government on policy. Yeah, and we, we need to engage both the, the minister and the prime minister yes. on these issues very shortly as well. Good evening, caller. Please go uh, ahead with your contribution. Evening. How are you? Very good. Uh, let me just say hi to your guest, hi Jerry. Nice seeing you guys. Oh, hi, hi John. Uh, <laughs> uh, nice seeing Maria as well. Thank you, John. I just Good night. Say, um, interesting discussion. I, I missed some of it. I got in a little bit late. But I've always. Um, Shame on you, John. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you have a million different things to do and 10,000 cups to wear with just one head to carry it on. Mm. That, that tends to happen. But I, I'm, 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 I'm glad that the discussion is taking place and it's taking place now in terms of looking at media. It's coming on the heels of the soon-to-be-launched Media Workers Association again. That's coming up on Saturday, and I congratulate everybody in terms of their role. And I'm hoping that those persons who have not signed up do so. We still have time to get that underway. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but the, the, the point is there. Very, very little in our society do we see a critique of media in terms of what we are doing. Typically, you get media 
criticizing everybody else, showing up the flaws and faults of everybody else, be it the police, be it terrorism officials, be it the government. But how much of the analysis do we do of ourselves? Mm -hmm. How do we evaluate our reporting? Is it fair? Do we present one side of the story today, a simple case of abuse, be it against a husband or wife, a mother or daughter, a father or son? And then do we look for the response the following day? Mm -hmm. Do we seek to balance the story right away? The opposition said X, the government said Y. That is the type of discussion I would like to see us media engaging more and more. And in the same venom and vigor that we critique society, let us also turn it on ourselves and review our quality of work and agree to work by standards, agree to work by certain ethics, and of course to give the society a better product in the end. Thank you very much. I'm yeah, so fantastic. glad John yes, brought sir. that up. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> glad, Clinton, because that is one of the reasons I even agreed to come on the program uh, and to talk about the study. Because what I want is for the media community in St. Lucia to begin to look more critically at itself, mm -hmm. whether it's through scholarship, through a thesis research, mm -hmm. or through the association, other means. But one of the things that we need to do, that other communities, other media communities have done, other, is to have a code of practice mm -hmm. or a, a standards. Mm -hmm. So the association, for example, to my mind, one of the first things, apart from the constitution, is to establish a code of practice, a code of ethics for media practitioners, whether it's a journalist or people working in government agencies and so on. What are the rules that we, we are a profession. Media mm -hmm. is a profession. Mm -hmm. We don't get that. In fact, one of my first essays at university was, is journalism a profession? I said yes, <laughs> right? And, and I, I would agree with yeah, you 100%, well, you, know, you know? So no, that's a serious matter because one of the problems <coughs> that we're having locally is the recruiting of people fresh from school, no media training, no background, mm -hmm. no, no, and even the basics, man, grammar, yes, pronunciation, how you, and just the quality of like print journalism, sentence construction, mm. where the apostrophe should go, all these things, it, they matter because they change meaning, they also make you, if you don't do these things, you look unprofessional, you look shabby, like you don't care about what you do, you don't care about the public that's reading it or, or digesting mm. it or receiving it. But all of that would change if we had a code of practice in addition to a code of ethics, because mm -hmm. that would uh, that would make it of balance, being fair, and so on. But if you don't have that, people can do anything. So I'm calling on the media association and joining up tomorrow. Let <laughs> us work on that. That I would love to do. We work on a code that that people would sign. Once you're a member of the association, you sign up to that. So as a practitioner, you know you have to adhere to X, Y, and Z. Doctors have to do it. Accountants have to right. do it. Why shouldn't journalists and media people you have know, to do you it? Know, it's I always it's actually. Mm, it you actually ahead, is yeah. one of the goals of the media association. Mm -hmm. We want to be able in the future to have the public know that if somebody says they're a member of the association, that comes with a certain standard. Yes. Mm -hmm. You acknowledge by accepting that person in the association that the person will meet a certain standard of work, a certain standard in terms of, of, um, of the ethics, yes. etc. And yes. that is the ultimate goal for the media Good. association. Now, now, some people consider me elitist, you know, mm -hmm. um, in the sense that I believe like any other profession, journalism is a profession, mm -hmm. and you, you require a certain level of training for you to be even considered a journalist. I agree. I agree. You know, and, and, and you know, for that reason, people feel that I, I, I feel no. I'm better than others. But it, it, it's, not, it's not that, it's just, you know, when you, when you have studied, I mean, I studied at RSL as a reporter in 1995, okay? And it's after I went to school and you know, I started putting things in context. I was like, "Oh, okay, that is why exactly. we do this. That exactly. is why we do that." I started understanding yes. the reasons. Yes, yes. You know, uh, why why you why you report a certain mm -hmm. way? Why you use certain words? Why you 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 formulate your sentences That's a certain right, yeah. way? You know, why in broadcast mm -hmm. you keep to your short sentences, one idea per sentence, one thought per sentence, yes. that there, kind of thing. A, there's a theoretical and practical yes. background to what we do. And and, and, yes, and, and by by being that. by by being in the practice all the time, you don't get these things most times because people aren't trained. And, and if you're practicing and you believe that you're great because you have been practicing for 20 and 30 years wrong. you might be practicing the wrong thing you might be excellent at doing the wrong thing exactly. <laughs> yes. you know that's a point that I make <laughs> exactly, all the time exactly. you know so you know those those media practitioners we have as well who have not gone on to get formal training I, I would encourage you to do that mm -hmm. because I think it's the, the difference between having you know a mediocre 
media mm -hmm. and one that is professional, one that people on the outside will re respect, mm -hmm. the government, the politicians, mm -hmm. the businesses, and, and, and all of society will mm -hmm. respect. Yes, I think you know, because they see you as someone who understands your work, mm -hmm. who takes pride in, in your work. And if you understand those basic things, then it would be more difficult mm -hmm. for you to be bought yes. by, by any right, interest. Right. You know, Clinton but then there's a, there's one other aspect which I, I think we need to consider. We need to look at education in the country as a whole, honestly, mm -hmm. because some people believe, as you said, you may believe that you're great, because you've been led to believe that you're great. But if the audience that you're speaking to no doesn't know the difference, then. then you will continue to believe that you're great and mm -hmm. continue giving the same level of work because your audience is lapping it up, and they keep telling you, "Oh my goodness, you're fantastic." Yes, yes. So yeah, because ra ratings, ratings, ratings. Um, yeah, so and then why should I fire somebody who they may have the worst grammar, they may not even research their stories, yes. right? They, they may not even that may not even be a story yes. that they're going on about, but then the audience loves it and they tune in every day. Mm -hmm. Why should I fire that person or ask them to improve what they're doing? Or what change they're doing what they're doing. Yes. Yeah. They have, there's no need for improvement. Why, why mess with it if it's not broken? It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So the audience needs to be educated. And again, it goes back to our level of awareness, not even necessarily education, mm -hmm. just awareness mm -hmm. in, in the community mm -hmm. at large. True. Yeah, I ideally you were saying Yes, something. no, I was just going to make the point that um, the, the, the media, uh, we're using the term rather loosely, eh? mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. anyway, we, we think we know what we're talking about, really is the only space between the public and special interest groups, mm -hmm. whether it's the politicians or governments or businesses and so on. And so I think we have a responsibility as the practitioners within that field, yes, to have to have professional standards in terms of how we report, what we report, grammar, pronunciation, the mechanics of things, as I think we spoke, we spoke earlier about putting things in context, because we are that filter. As, as media, we don't, we're not supposed to have an agenda. Mm -hmm. we are suppo our agenda is the good of the public, in terms of the public understanding what is happening, why it's happening, uh, where it's happening, mm -hmm. when it's happening, right? So we really have to get it right. We have an awesome responsibility, because very often we're, we're the only space that the public have between understanding what A, B, C, D, competing interests, what are they, and we have, the, we have that responsibility to synthesize, analyze, not necessarily editorialize, mm -hmm. but to give mm -hmm. people a context right, exactly. and for them to understand. But we must do it well, <laughs> and we must do it through proper um, grammar and structures and speaking to people properly and writing properly, yes? Yeah, we have, no we have no country, we have no race, we have no color, we have no creed, That's right. we have no family. We're not supposed to. <laughs> you know, and, and when I tell people that, they, they think that I'm crazy. No, but, no. But, but for you to be effective and for you to, for you to be taken seriously and for people to respect you and the work that you're doing, mm -hmm. you cannot, like when I listen to CNN, uh, you know, they used to bother me a lot. Yeah, they still do, still bother me. You know, <laughs> or we, we had war. In yeah, Iraq, yeah, right, right, we're yeah, not right. at war. The government, the government of, yeah, of yeah, the yeah, United yeah, States yeah. is at war. You are yes, journalists. Yes, if you're a journalist, yes, you're yeah. just covering PBS the war. PBS is a good model. Public PBS is wonderful. Great I model. love, yeah. I love um, PBS. Was, oh, they were going to cut it, but no. Yes, 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 yes that's yeah. right. And, and I got the opportunity yeah. to work with NPR as well. That's okay, a national right, public radio. You know, so I worked with them for four years, and you know that it's a different model. So it brings out these things exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And again, they don't have the issues of trying to please that's the advertisers right. Right. or trying not to anger the politicians. Yes. So, so, so that, that's important. It's just, oh, it how just time flies yeah. when you're having fun. We're now, having fun. Maria, Marcel, coming up this weekend. Yes, um, we hope to see as many media workers as possible because this association is something that media workers have been asking for. They've asked, they've asked, they've asked. We've finally done the, the groundwork. We've established the association. We are going to acknowledge this weekend that it has been formed and formally launch it. So we hope to see as many media workers as possible. And of course, n more financial members, it's, it's free to financial members. They are automatically invited and part of it. People who are not financial members, we encourage you to join. Please become financial. You may have sent in your, your um, form, your information via the internet, marcel.lc, M-A-S-L.lc. However, you, we need you to be financial. Please contact the treasurer and ensure that you are financial so that you can be part of it. One of the most um, significant aspects of the night would be the fact that we'll be giving certificates of membership to members of this new entity, this Marcel. And if you're not there and you're not part of that very special night, you would not have been part of the groundwork that establishes the media association. And it also says that you as a media person are committing to becoming more professional, committing to um, uh, establishing Marcel as the body that determines or, or helps the media to improve itself and helps the media to become better, more professional, and um, represent the people better. So hopefully just 
come and be part of it. If you think there's a problem in the way it's formatted, the pro a problem in, the, in, in our goals, the problem in the manner in which we do things, the only way to change it is to become part of it. If you stand on the outside and you complain, you will not make a difference. You need to be part of it and work on the inside, influence and direct the association. So we hope to see you Saturday night at the Bay Gardens Beach Resort. We'd like to thank Bay Gardens Beach Resort, of course, and Mrs. Sam Bertia Pal, who has assisted us with um, setting up the, the beautiful cocktail that we'll have, as well as the Winwood and Lyrid Brewery and Consolidated Foods Limited. <laughs> and <laughs> we've also been assisted by St. Lucia Distillers. I mean, we have to acknowledge people mm -hmm. who assist us. And of course, this does not mean that we are biased as, as media. Mm -hmm. This is just the association. <laughs> and we appreciate every assistance that we've gotten. But the most important aspect of the night is the media workers themselves. We hope to have uh, representatives from the ministry um, as well there as hopefully the Prime Minister himself. Uh, that again, that does not mean that we are biased. It simply means that we are acknowledging this is the ministry that we have to work with if we're going to change things in the media in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. And that is why she's the communication <laughs> officer. <laughs> yeah, that was a long sentence. <laughs> I really, Maria, thank you very much yes, for, for being part of Newsmaker Live. And thank you, those of you who called in. We appreciate your contributions. Those of, those of you who just watched, of course, we uh, really, really appreciate you tuning into this program every night. Just a program note tomorrow night, Demystifying Cancer Part 2 with a focus on cancers prevalent to men. Yes. Delia and her guests, Dr. Owen Gabriel and former External Affairs Minister Rufus Buske ask viewers to face some of their health fears with a personal story of pain and survival. Mr. Maurice Moffat will talk about alternative herbal remedies. Advice too for those caring for cancer victims. DFL on DBS only tomorrow night, 8.30 p.m. Well, of course, right here. That's Thursday, Thursday, 8.30. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Clinton Reynolds. Looking forward to seeing you next week at the same time where we'll present another hot topic, interesting topic. But before that, we'll be here on the weekend for the Press Club. Until then, have a good night.